I think we all know that I have a lot of issues with a lot of the things that WWE does today, and we also know that I have a lot of concerns about this company and what they're going to do going forward. But one of my most consistent worries, concerns for this company over the past decade to decade and a half is the lack of a real true blue franchise player not just that type of five tool talent that can do everything because even those guys aren't necessarily always equipped to be franchise guys but those types of guys that when you see them you know them the hogan's the flares the austin's the rocks those are the franchise type of players there's other guys too but those are a few that i throw out there the guys that when you put their name on the marquee, you get sellouts. Those guys, when they're on your television show, the ratings peak higher for their segments by a great number compared to anybody else. Those guys that move merch at a much greater rate than anybody else, and it's not just because the company forces it and creates a situation like that. It happens naturally and organically. Those guys that you could send out into the mainstream that get you that major level attention and get new eyeballs on the product. Ultimately, as much as the WWE believes in their brand and that their brand is the number one draw, ultimately, that has been one of the biggest drawbacks for this company in recent years is that it's the brand that draws, not the talent that draws, when traditionally in wrestling, when you're the best, it hasn't been the brand that's drawn. It's been the talent, the stories, the characters. They've been what have ultimately drawn the biggest houses, the most money, which ultimately is what you're in business in, is to make as much money as possible. It is a business. You are trying to profit. And how the WWE does it is in a way to where they can still profit, but they don't maximize their profit. Because they're worried about investing in guys and having them go do movies or go do something else. You can call that the post-Brock Lesnar reality of WWE. Um, but it is a major significant concern. And one that I don't know will have the possibility of really being addressed anytime soon. I don't know if WWE really has a solution in-house. I don't know if there's one outside of house. But it is a concern. It's a significant concern. Because as more and more people become disenfranchised by the WWE brand, disillusioned by the WWE brand, disinterested in the WWE brand, ultimately that brand has less and less drawing power, which means that brand makes less money. When you look at this company's history, when they've been at their best, you had Hogan in the 80s. You had the Monday Night Wars Attitude Era period of Austin The Rock and Vince McMahon. You could truly say three franchise players. Those were the two hot periods. And those were the unquestioned top guy in the case of Hogan or the top guys in the case of Austin Rock and the real top guy, Vince McMahon. So when those guys were megastars, above and beyond anybody else, even in a world of other megastars, the business was best. Imagine that. And a lot of people, sure, are going to try and throw Cena into this category for his decade of doom at the top and how he was the top merch seller and he was the top ratings guy. But that's kind of a flawed metric to use when the audiences consistently decreased during his decade at the top. When, yeah, his merch sales were better than everybody else's, but his merch sales are a pittance compared to guys in the past like Austin and The Rock and Hogan and so forth. Um, also, when those guys were at the top, specifically Hogan, Austin, Rock, McMahon, more often than not, you did not have to tarp off the entire upper deck in the arenas that you were performing in like you do Cena. Cena being a franchise player is a fraud. He was a prop utilized by the WWE and that's all it is. He was not a franchise player. Please do not come at me with that because he wasn't. So the way I really look at it is this company has gone a decade and a half without a real true blue franchise player. Because by the time he got to 2002, Austin left as a full-time guy. 
The Rock was transitioning in the movies, and Vince was becoming a decreasing presence on television. It's been 15 years since this company's had a real true blue franchise guy. And I think it ultimately reflects in the decrease in business, the decrease in interest, the decrease of viewership and audience for their product. But when I look at this company now, you know, I see this company get smaller, this company get older, and it's not a good harbinger of things to come in terms of being able to find a franchise guy. Like I look at guys that are too old, you know, whether or not they could even be that guy. But Bobby Roode, I'm a fan of, but he's 40. He's not my franchise guy for a long time. When I'm talking about franchise guy, I'm talking about that guy that you can get white nuclear hot and make money with for at least half a decade. You're not doing that with Bobby Roode or AJ Styles or who's 40. Sheamus, we tried there, didn't happen. He's 39. Styles is 40. Samoa Joe, like him, but come on. Franchise player, 38. Shinsuke Nakamura, cool, whatever, 37. The Miz, big fan of his. He's the mid-card MVP of WWE, but he is still ultimately the mid-card MVP of WWE. And oh, by the way, he's also 37 and about to have a kid. Finn Balor. Can't even believe I'm bringing his name up, but some of you knuckleheads will. But even in that case, he's 36, not to mention the other major deficiencies in his performance level. So a lot of those names that you would throw out there, to me, are just too old. Just too old. Then you got other guys that are too part-time, too ineffective, too old. The Lesners, the Cenas, the Ortons. You know, you've tried that, been there, done that, and it hasn't worked. None of them are franchise players. And if you call one of them franchise players now, what does it mean to be a franchise player when your product is about as lame as it was in the mid-90s in that transition period between the Hogan era and the Attitude era? And then you look at so many of the other guys that this company has invested big in in recent years to varying levels of degrees or guys that we're familiar with, the guys that have been around a while. Look at all three members of the Shield. I'm sorry. Seth Rollins is a franchise guy. Give me a break. Dean Ambrose is a franchise guy. Child, please. And honestly, Roman Reigns is too much like Randy Orton, uh, a lot more than I think a lot of people realize. He does not have the power of personality and the ability to talk enough people into the stadium to be a true franchise player. He just does not have that. And this company, to go down that path to where they are going to try and make him, just because he's young, because of a variety of factors, their franchise guy for the next decade, they're seen a 2.0, just shows how much they're willing to settle and just how much trouble this company is in. Braun Strowman people are going to talk about, but was Braun Strowman really over because of Braun Strowman, or was he really over because people just hated Roman Reigns that much? And he's, again, what, 33-34. Bray Wyatt, there's a lot missing there, and the company's done a lot to help ruin him. Are you looking at Baron Corbin and Big Cass, this franchise guy? Oof. Cesaro I like, but I'm not building my entire um, multinational conglomerate wrestling sports entertainment federation around him. Sami Zayn? Pfft. If you think Sami Zayn is a franchise player, then go do what the boys at What Culture did. Start a wrestling fed and book him, and he could be your top guy. He's not going to be your massive big-name star. Big E, Rusev, differing issues there. The point I'm getting at here is I look at this entire roster and I see nobody that has franchise potential. Nobody with franchise ability. Nobody that could truly be that landscape changer for WWE. And that is the biggest single significant problem that I see. Because other things could be bad with your product. There could be other issues. But if you had that guy it helps make some of those other things go away. And I realize in today's environment with the fragmented wrestling fan bases that we have that honestly are more fragmented than they ever are, it could be more challenging than ever to create a guy and make a guy into that franchise player that kind of is unanimously loved, that people unanimously want to see. Because either mainstream people, kids, women, would like a Roman Reigns, but all the hardcores hate him. Or you're going to have somebody like a bring up a Finn Balor, just as one example of many, where he's got a huge hardcore fan base, but everybody else kind of looks at him as a joke. Two different guys, two different types, two different styles, and even though viewed differently from different perspectives, the result is ultimately the same. Neither one of them can be or should be your franchise player. And most importantly, they can't be because they won't be. 
And if you try to make them to be or try to create them as if they are, you're going to be in an even worse position five or 10 years from now. And I know some of you are going to point to age and be like, hey, Austin, when he was the guy the first time around, he was 33 when he won the belt at WrestleMania 14. Yeah. And he was incredibly white hot and he was gone by the time he was 37. Hogan, yes, was 30 when he got his first WWF title. But that was also a much different time, a much different era. And he doesn't work nearly the type of style that so many of these guys have been forced to work in today's modern wrestling business. Hogan trying to do a lot of that shit now, uh, back then, he would have been done at 33, 34 because it would just destroyed his body. I know The Rock was only 28 when he got it, and that was great and wonderful, but he was gone a few years later. But that's due to circumstances out of WWE's control because he just had that much star ability. But ultimately, you can't really call a guy a franchise player if you're bringing him in and he's already pushing 40. That's not a good position to be in because two or three years later, he could be done, he could be disinterested, he could be too injured, and then you got to sit there and move on to something else. And even if you bring up guys like CM Punk or Daniel Bryan and the fact that you feel like maybe they were kind of quasi-franchise players, those were only for bits and pieces, very small bits and pieces, and where the fuck are those two guys now? And if you sit there and tell me somebody like a Kazuchika Okada or Kenny Omega from New Japan could be the guy, Omega's in his mid-30s, similar to a Daniel Bryan or CM Punk with years of abuse on his body from working the type of style that he does, and furthermore, does he really have North American franchise-type of ability for WWE. No. Okada, language barrier to a certain degree, other things, the WWE not really understanding how they would be able to book him. Is that really going to be your franchise guy? No. I just don't see how this is going to get any better. I think if anything, it's only going to get worse. The business is getting smaller. The business is getting older. It's becoming too much about one thing, which is the moves that you do in the ring and not about the other things like getting over as a personality, being a character, being able to talk on the mic, having charisma, having personality, those things that actually really truly draw money. The WWE is in a bad place and it's going to continue to get worse. I just don't see where it's gonna get any better And I think one of the biggest issues is ultimately, as I've pointed out here in this video, the lack of a franchise player. Do you see anybody in WWE that really truly has franchise ability? Do you really? And if so, why? I don't mean to just crap on you, but I'm really curious to know who is it and why? And if it's not somebody in WWE, is there somebody out there that could be the franchise guy? Because the way I look at it right now, it's not going to get any better because there's nobody on the landscape in the company or out right now, as I see it, that can be that franchise player, that true Hogan, Austin, Rock, Vince type of franchise player for WWE.